Hi guys, welcome back to Success Decoded TV. Today we're going to be meeting Rafael dos Santos, author of the book Moving Abroad One Step at a Time, which is soon to be released. This is essentially for people who are looking to move abroad for the very first time. He also runs a very successful property business. Let's go have a chat with him and get to know him a bit better. You moved to London from Brazil 11 years ago, didn't speak a word of English, got a job as a cleaner, and now you run your own property business, which turns over 1.5 million, and you've just written a new book, which launches in May. What do you do differently to say the person who came to the city of London 11 years ago, and is currently a cleaner 11 years later? I think ambition is one of the things that it takes, you know, drives people. Um, if it's good ambition, you, mm -hmm. know, you want to improve your life, you want to, you want to develop, you want to do something better. Uh, and I think ambition was the first one sure. where, um, because I wasn't a cleaner in Brazil and it was kind of, I had to restart here. So I knew that, uh, you know, I want more in my life. Not, uh, not that the cleaning job, it was bad, but yeah. it was just, you know, for me, it wasn't enough and I wanted to, to go for, you know, to go forward. What, what is it that drove you though? What is it that really made you passionate? What made me really passionate was, um, it was that I knew, I knew that at some point I wanted to find something that I really loved, mm -hmm. you know, um, and my cleaning job, it wasn't something that I loved, right. obviously. So it, for me, it was, it was about, you know, discovering, I was very young as well, I was 20, you know, I was discovering myself, mm -hmm. finding out things about me and about the city, and, you know, I was in a new country. So to think that, you know, I knew what I wanted at the time, no, I didn't. You know, I came to London to learn English, I came to have fun, I came to meet people, you know, and as you grow up, um, and you get more mature, then you start thinking, you know, what do I, I what do I really want from life? Yeah. Apart from all the partying and, and, and make friends. <laughs> so, <laughs> so people priorities change. Sure. So people that are sort of currently starting out that sort of want to do something different, right. what sort of advice would you give them? It depends on what you mean by different. You know, it's uh, 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 it if they want to do if doing something different is to study medicine, mm -hmm. you know, go and study medicine. Sure. But for, for me to do something different, um, obviously in Brazil I worked for Microsoft. Mm -hmm. So coming here and working as a cleaner was a completely different thing. Mm -hmm. And then from cleaning I went to work in a school and then from a school I went, you know, and then I started working in Selfridges, spraying perfume. So everything was very different. And it was the whole process of learning and developing mm -hmm. and then finding, discovering. Um, and then at some point, things just fall into place. Sure. But, um, it, you know, it takes, it takes a long time. So how, how does someone go from sort of starting off as a cleaning job, sort of moving around from job to job, just learning, getting experience, like you said, uh, to having a business that turns over okay. 1.5 million? Um, well, the idea came from uh, when I was living with flatmates, they were moving out and then I wanted to live in the house where I was and then mm -hmm. I decided to stay in the house and I said, look, I'll take responsibility. So I think it's when you see an opportunity there. I think it's one of the things that makes uh, uh, whoever creates a business or, or you grab the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So you see an opportunity there and this is what I did. You know, I had a five bedroom house in Marleybone. Um, and I thought, oh, I can, you know, maybe I can m m move people in. And sure. so I charged them a rent where I didn't pay rent anymore. So mm -hmm. I had, so that's, that's how it starts. But it's not, a, you know, it, it, I don't want you to think that it's about taking uh, advantage. Sure. But it's, it's creating an opportunity and seeing a business, you know, when it comes, mm -hmm. uh, comes along. For, for people watching this that are in, in property, uh, and, and taking sort of five bedrooms and sort of renting them now, is, isn't that subletting? Subletting, yes, yeah, correct. Is, is that legal? It is, it is, um, well, there is a, uh, there is a formal uh, term now called rent to rent. Sure. Uh, it's something that I didn't, you know, I didn't have nine years ago yeah. when I started. But as long as it's on your contract, you know, um, I do know a lot about UK law now and I know how it works. Um, but as long as you put that in your contract and you are upfront with your landlord, mm -hmm. Um, there is no reason why it's illegal, you know, as long as it's agreed sure. with the property so owner. So there's, there's right ways to do there it. Are what, yes, okay. exactly. And what, what do you do currently on a day-to-day -day at the moment then? Well, one thing that I learned to make things really happen is that you need to have a processes in place, okay? So I completely changed my business this year where I had an office 
and you know I had people working for me in the office and and obviously having the whole, all the expenses of having an office rent mm -hmm. and insurance and you know gas you know electricity sure. everything else so I turned that around where now I ha I do everything online um, I pay a service office to use mm -hmm. that address and the way that I run is much more efficient so but it's more efficient because I decided to stake to um, step away from the from from the from the work a, a little bit it's just kind of I now I work on the business I don't work in the business and it took me a long time to get the mind shift where I have to reply to the emails no if I know that if someone sends an email that is a standard email there that I can reply mm -hmm. I can employ someone that can just follow the procedures of the company sure so I don't need to be there I can help to create that I don't need to be doing it anymore. So it's systemizing. It's systemizing, okay. yes. Creating processes and making so what, sure that they... What place. other sort of tips do you think can allow people to really work on the business rather than in the business? It really depends on the stage. And when you first start, when you first start a business, it's yeah. impossible to think, oh my God, you know, I'm going to get to that. Because there are so many things you have to do, you know. You have to open a company, you have to get a logo, you have to get a website, you need to pay the cleaner, you need yeah. to get the cleaning product. Yeah. You know, there is, there is a million, a million of things to do. You know, your task list is endless. Sure. Your days have 25 hours because yeah. you have to be working. And, but at some point, you need to know when that point is. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't tell you, you know, my point was maybe after five years. But you can be in business and depending on your background and your experience, you can then turn this and actually, I only needed two years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you'll be from, from person to person, really. Sure. But at, you need to have that shift in your mind at some point where, okay, I need to have a system in place here so I can, I can do other things that sure. will improve the business. <laughs> so the point where you were sort of, you, you, were, you started off as a cleaner to the point where you were running your own business. Yeah. How long was that? Okay. Um, it took me five years uh, to, from the point where I was cleaning people's houses and mm -hmm. you know I was I was a glass collector at some point in Soho bars yeah, you know <laughs> okay. you have to pay your rent when you arrive in this country um, so you know it, it it didn't happen overnight it's yeah. not something that you are cleaning and you think oh I'm gonna start a business tomorrow sure. you know it doesn't happen I worked for a woman who had a business similar to mine mm -hmm. I helped her mm -hmm. I put lots of furniture together for mm -hmm. her I painted for her I unblocked toilets so you know I had a lot of experience with how to run a property sure you know it's not not running the business but how to maintain a property you know how to make sure the property is well looked after so that is knowledge you get every day you know you you, you know how to clean a house right. you know how to paint a house mm -hmm. you know how to change a curtain you know how to put a furniture together mm -hmm. and then slowly you think actually I can do this I can do this on my own sure you know, I don't need to work for someone sure. so from there I then saved money mm -hmm. you know and it's Something that you you discuss with a lot of people, you mm -hmm. talk to people who are in property, I'm thinking about this, but then you get worried because you have your salary that pays your rent and your your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. How how can I go from having a salary on a monthly basis to starting a business that I don't know if it's going to work? Was that the, the always the idea though? I think what what's great about you is that you you're open so you have the open sort of mentality of different opportunities you know all these sort of stories and changes is the fact that you were you were able to adapt and you wanted to adapt sure, sure. what were you looking for at the time i don't know <laughs> i have to be honest sure you know it's it was something that i was trying to find something that i really enjoyed mm -hmm. you know what do i like and when I started working with properties and, and when I got the first property and then I started having contact with a lot of people from abroad yeah. and I thought, I like this, you know, and in the same time I was an assistant teacher sure. in a school where I was, you know, and then I was meeting a lot of people from abroad too. That's when I started traveling a lot because I knew people from school, I could visit them sure. in their countries. Sure. So my first three years in Europe, you know, I've, I visited about 100 cities, you know, but just visiting friends all over. So... It's, as you said, it's, it's grabbing opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know, I met someone who I was helping to put furniture together and I told her, do you need me, do you need me to do anything else in the house? Sure. So at the time it was income, mm -hmm. but it was adding to the knowledge. It was adding, you know, to getting more knowledgeable and then thinking, now I can turn this knowledge yeah. into something that I can make money with. Mm -hmm. Well, the, th the thing I guess with, with people sort of watching this that are currently doing a job that they don't enjoy, that they're not passionate about, 
and they're sort of thinking about changing, but they're scared because they sort of, you know, sure. they want their paycheck, they want security. Sure. Is, is changing constantly the right answer or is commitment? Good question. Well, that is, I think, yeah, that is, there is a big difference there. You know, I did a million things, yeah. you know, I, I, I cleaning, I worked in Selfridges. It, there were so many things that I did, but in all of them, you need to see what you gained. Mm -hmm. You always have to learn and gain something from what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there is no point. Sure. But from there, then at, you, um, you need to develop, you need to get into a kind of development stage which it happened to me about a year ago. Okay. You know, it really, you know, it, it, it needs to, it needs to, you need to be mature. Mm -hmm. You know, it, there are certain things that it, it's a formula that it needs to be there. Sure. You know, a 20 year old, uh, you will not be able to develop a million pound idea tomorrow. You know, it doesn't happen. I don't think it happens to any great idea that happened. It didn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something that people are, uh, um, bombarded with information somehow. And you just put, that information together mm -hmm. and you create something mm -hmm. but I going to the point where what do you do if you you know how do you know if you love something yeah you have to explore correct you know you just have to keep exploring something that I absolutely love is travel I absolutely love traveling and I thought what can I do mm -hmm. to link what I love to make money but the point is that you never do something because you want to make money okay because otherwise if the, if the goal of your business is make money, your customers will see that. And people don't want to give your money to you if you are only after money. Sure. sure. So, you know, I found that I love traveling mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, I've always wanted to have a charity. So for me, what I started now is I, uh, I create, I'm going to create a business called Room in the Moon, okay. which is to help people who are moving abroad, right? And... It's providing free information mm -hmm. and on the website people will be able to exchange information about their countries, you know, via videos, via blogs, there will be forums where can they can discuss sure. and it'll be all free for them Fantastic. to make, you know, to make that uh, yeah. dream or that goal to happen. The, the, the fact that you have the time to sort of go and explore and think about stuff like that, that was because you were already, so you're already at a point where you covered your base level, you're secure, sure. and now you're leveraging yourself. Sure. Is that right? So you, you say travel is your passion. How are you, how are you turning that into a full-time business then now? Okay. So, you know, for me to have the time to do this now is I created systems to my business. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have a property business where I rent rooms for people who are coming from abroad mainly. Sure. So I rent rooms in flat shares. So the experience that I have with that mm -hmm. is I know the fears and the excitement of people who are going abroad because I moved abroad myself. Yeah. So I set up the property in a way that I know exactly what people need. Right. So from there, I created systems for the business, mm -hmm. so I don't have to be in the business anymore. I don't right. have to reply to the emails and the phone calls. I have things in place where people can be doing that for me. Sure. So I'm out of the business. You know, I have a PA who can do the Facebook and, yeah. you know, and do all that. <laughs> so I can, I can then think of yeah. how can I improve, mm -hmm. you know, what can I develop now to, to create something that I love. Yeah. And, and this is what I did. So that's that's sort of what's led to moving abroad. To moving right? abroad, so you, you've exactly. You've been spending your time writing this book, positioning yourself as an expert. Exactly. Fantastic. Yes. Tell us about the book, Rafael. Okay. <laughs> well, the book, um, it was, it's because it's something that I love doing, you know, yeah. traveling, and and then I decided to help people, and and so what I did is. I put in the book that your um, trip abroad when you move, there are five stages, okay. okay? And everybody goes through these five stages. If you go from Argentina to South Africa, from Australia to India, from mm -hmm. the US, anywhere to anywhere, there are always five stages. Okay. Which is, the number one is the why, where, and when. So why are you going and where and when. The second stage is the research. Once you decide where you're going, you need to know about the places, the food, you know. So you do all the research to find how that country works, mm -hmm. what is the season, you know, what, do you pay, what clothes you have to pack to, when you're moving there. And then when you move to the country, um, there are lots of things there that talk about cultural shock. You're going to be, I talk about, a lot about flat sharing because of to my do. experience. Sure. So I put in the book, how do you search for a flat? What questions do you ask people when you're searching? You know, what issues you have in the flat? 
But I interviewed about 10 people who are in a relationship with someone from another country. Interesting. So they talk about their point of view about being with that nationality. Because mm -hmm. if you're going abroad, you're going to be sharing a flat or a yeah. house with people from other countries. So it's not just about my experience in the book. It's not my life. It's, it's helping people to understand everything that you go through. Yeah. Are the people that you interviewed abroad, are they couples that are in London specifically? Or is it all over? No, I have, I, have, I have some that are in London. Yeah. But I have friends, you know, there is a couple in the US where sure. she's from Finland, he's okay. from the US. Um, I have someone who works for me, she's Italian, she now lives in Sudan because she got married to a Sudanese man. So, you know, it's not just about <laughs> being in London, yes. you know, or it's now I'm kind of, I, you know, I'm a living brand of moving abroad. Yes. My friends are from abroad, you know, my business is about helping people. Mm -hmm. My property is full of people from abroad. Correct. So it's, you know, I realize that my, my life is, is around that. So it's, so what I decided to do is, okay, I can help people to understand. Yeah. You what, know? Are the, what are some of the challenges that people fail to understand at the start? At the start? Yes. Is... People think that everything would be wonderful when they go. Okay. You know, is the dream, is the goal, it would be so exciting, it would yeah. be but not realistic. It's not realistic. No, because everything will have ups and downs. Mm -hmm. And now and the first three months are the crucial ones. You're gonna feel very homesick, mm -hmm. you're gonna feel very lonely, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't have a friend there. And what I do in the book is I open your eyes before you get there. So my idea of the book is I'm going to hold your hand because I'm your best friend <laughs> and I'm telling you the truth. Sure. This sure. is what is going to happen. Fantastic. It will be bad times, but there will be amazing times mm. and you're going to meet amazing people. Brilliant. You just have to be open to, you know, the experiences that you're going to You've have. You've also developed an app as well, correct? Exactly. Yeah. Well. So the app, um, which is, it's released, will be released at the end of April. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the app is to help people to organize the trip. So, you know, the app is related to the book, so it's about the five stages. Sure. But we'll have functionality, so you can find out what is the currency in the country, and if you convert to your own currency, to the currency where you're going. Yeah. So if you are in Spain going to the US, you know, you can do okay. that. You can check the season in the country, so you know if it's hot or cold, so you know what to pack when you Fantastic. get there. Yeah, and there will be like a chat room, a forum. <laughs> yeah. So the idea is that people can get connected via the app before they get there. So I want people not to feel lonely anymore. So they can make friends Great. before they get there. Yeah. So that's the idea. Fantastic. What's the audience, the target audience okay. of this book? The, the way that I wrote the book yeah. is that I had someone in mind, which is my younger sister. Okay. I was writing to help her to go through this journey that, you know, in your 20s, you kind of get lost. Mm -hmm. What do we do with my life? You know, what do we develop? What, Everybody goes through that. Sure. I went through that. Uncertainty. Exactly. The uncertainty, insecurity, yeah. you know, is kind of building on that. So what I did, because she was in London only for 18 months, mm -hmm. I got her in the last stages where, do I go back? Do I not go back? What am I doing here? You know, she was here to learn English, to go back to Brazil, to get a job. And I thought, if I write the book to her, to yeah. explain to her exactly how it works, other people will feel that I'm talking to them too. Because I'm not trying to reach everyone. Correct. I'm trying to reach people, you know, mainly 20 to 30 year olds. Obviously, if you're 35 and moving abroad for the first time, the book works for you too. <laughs> but it's that okay. time of your life where you want to go abroad yeah. because you need, you know, to find yourself, change of air, sure. whatever you want to achieve. But it's specifically to help people to understand if you're going for the first time. Okay. So first time travelers. Yeah. Brilliant. Raphael, so what's the, what's the next big thing for you? I am in, pro in the process of creating a charity and okay. this is, yeah, this is something that I, I've always had in mind. It was always something that I was, I was like, oh my God, you know, I, I was scared of, of doing that because I thought it would be too much. Yeah. But as you said, now that, you know, I, um, I managed to leverage myself and, you know, I can have people doing things that I don't need to be doing things anymore, mm -hmm. like creating my blogs and, sure. you know, I can dictate my blogs, things like that. Um, I'm creating a, a charity where... At the moment, it is all about providing free information to people okay. who want to move abroad. So I have an iTunes called You Moving Abroad. I have, um, you know, I, YouTube, everything that you can find on the internet called You Moving Abroad. It's providing f people with free information so, so I can help them sure. to make that decision to go through that journey. But the main idea of the charity at some point will be that I will work in partnerships with large companies like BA and Alitalia. 
and universities in English-speaking countries. Sure. And I'm going to help communities that work around tourism, just like um, Peru, for example. Okay. You know Machu Picchu, okay. a lot of people go there to visit. Okay. So what I want to do is help those communities that are around Machu Picchu to learn English. Because if they learn English, they are able to become guides and help, you know, guides of the tourists who are going to visit. Okay. Because at the moment, they have to take people from the capital because they study, they can speak English. So they go there to work as a guide, so the money goes back to the capital. Got it. So if people, yeah, so people around those communities, they will be able to learn English, then the, commu the money stays within the community and we can improve their lives through education. Fantastic. So it's all about contributing back to society, to, society. to the local sort of villages and help them exactly. really... Yeah, so, and the way that I want to do that is is actually providing an experience where people go abroad. Okay. So if they're in Peru, they can go to, to the US mm -hmm. and work or study for three months where everything is paid. So they go back with this amazing experience. They can teach English to the people there fantastic. and they can work as a guide. So they can, you know, give some back yeah. to the society where they are as well. So how can people get in touch with you? They can access my web, my personal website, which is rafaeldosantos.com. Sure. And there they can see, you know, my businesses about Rooming the Moon, London Up. They can see about my charity mm -hmm. and they can take a look at the book as well. Brilliant. Okay. How can people get a copy of the book as well? The book will be out at the beginning of May. Uh, the big party to launch the book is on the 20th of May. Okay. But before that, it will be available. So, And if people sign up on, on my site, rafaeldesantos.com, they get the first chapter for free. Fantastic. So they can, they can yeah, cool. have a, like a... A peek and you know, can take a look <laughs> to see what the book's about. That's great. Well thank you for coming. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you very much. Take care. Thanks.